during our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about the seed germination tests and just the different types of tests that are available to farmers so they have good information on the seed they want to put in the ground. Well, if you're a farmer or if you're a gardener and you're going to be planting seed, one of the things you'll notice on the bag of seed that you get is what the germination percentage is. Now, what that tells you is out of every 100 seeds, you expect 90 or 95 or 99 percent of them to germinate and grow. Well, that's great information because if you had on the germination test, well, 20 percent germination, well, what a waste if you have to buy 100 seeds only to get 20 to grow. So farmers obviously want to see big numbers and gardeners would be the same way. Well, there are other types of germination tests. So, for example, the cold germination test or the saturated cold germination test. Saturated would be wet, basically. But the point is, in stress conditions, how well does the plant grow? So, like on our farm, I'm super interested in what's that cold germination score? If the warm germination score is 95% for my corn, that's pretty good. But we like to plant when it's really cold, maybe 45 degrees outside or something like that. And you go, well, wait a second. Uh, the warm germination test, that's run when it's 70 degrees. It's not going to be 70 degrees for a long time. Let's look at the cold germination test. If that says 90% or 85%, I mean, it's fine, but we just as farmers have to understand, okay, that's the risk that I've got there. I'm going to literally lose 5% or 10% of my plants if I plant into cold soils. To me, is that worth it or is it not? Well, it certainly is a consideration. And let's just say that you had a low cold germination score. Does that mean that seed's not okay to plant? No, that doesn't mean that at all. It just means you probably shouldn't plant it when it's cold. You should probably leave that for later in the <laughs> yep. planting season and put it in when the soil's warm back up. Right, and could you overcome some of that with other cultural practices? Well, it would help. I mean, if let's say you worked the soil, you tilled it black, that soil's going to be warmer than if you were in no-till or maybe even just a little bit in strip-till. But especially the no-till where all that residue's out there, you go, boy, I've either got to have a cold, germination score that's great, or I have to wait just a little bit longer than the conventional till person to let the soil warm up. Now you may be thinking, who pays for all this testing? Does the farmer or the gardener have to pay for that? Or does the seed company that's selling it have to pay? Well, the seed company is paying for at least a warm germination test. And that's what you'll normally see on most tags. So they'll pre-print it right on the bag. So you know, okay, the warm germ score is this. However, if you want more test data, like the saturated cold germ test, for example, I don't know any seed company that's running those. So you're going to have to run that on your own as the farmer or gardener or user of the product. So if you want additional testing, you've got to write the check. Well, once again, a germination test is just going to tell how many plants are going to grow. And there are varying tests out there like warm and cold germ scores. These are all important if you want top yields, but so is weed control. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 